Hey guys and girls, I'm James Tan and welcome to my channel Before You Go, a new channel in 2021, all about drones and some other exciting stuff I'm going to throw in also. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Part 107 license, what it is and if you need one, and how I passed it and some tips, and uh, I barely passed. I got a 73 and I thought I was going to ace it, but before I talk about that, let me tell you a little bit about myself and the channel that I plan and plans I have for it. About four years ago, I went and bought this drone maybe five years ago and I first time I flew it I flew it into my neighbor's suburban I thought I would start using them for roof inspections and then it went where most people that buy drones it went in, in on the shelf <laughs> and collected dust but then about a year and a half ago I bought this Holystone 700 put it in a tree a few times and uh, it went back on another shelf but then my son came over with some real nice DJI drones and showed me how easy they were to fly and man after that I'm really hooked and uh, I want to show you some of the drones I'm going to be comparing this year. So some of the drones I'm going to be reviewing and doing test on is the Inspire 2 against the Inspire 1, the Phantom 4 Pro versus the Typhoon H, uh, the Spark versus the Mini. Uh, what is the best beginner drone to start so you can learn your orientation of the controls? So you always want to start there. Uh, as I get into the FPV world, <laughs> In the, the Autel Evo versus the Maverick 2 Pro versus the original Maverick Pro. Maybe that's good enough for you. But um... So what is a Part 107 license? A Part 107 license is a license issued by the FAA. Uh, it's good for two years. It costs $150 to take the test. If you flunk the test, then you got to pay another $150 and wait two weeks. I've got a friend, he's flunked it six times. Another one just took it for his first time and he got a 63. I only got a 73 and I thought I was going to ace that thing because in my practice test, I got a 90-95 and I took it like 20 times in my practice exam and I used Remote Pilot 101. It was $150, but the good thing with them is that they're your lifetime members. So when you go back and renew every two years, uh, you can still go into the content and study. Uh, some things I suggest, don't try to study all at once. I mean, study a couple hours a day for a couple weeks, take notes, review your notes, but when you go back in and study, uh, and your brain will retain all that information better over time. I think some of the times, like my friend that's flunked it six times, it's because, I mean, he just panics. And But you know, you, you, if you go in comfortable and you're getting a 95 on the pr practice exam, then why did I get a 73? Well, there was a lot of information on that test that they didn't cover online or anything. They were asking a bunch of questions about planes. I didn't even, I wasn't even expecting that. Um, things I didn't study. One thing I wish I'd have known about is on the FAA website, if you go to the FAA website, as I'm gonna show you here, up in this right-hand corner in the search bar, type in handbooks for aviation, and you see this long list slide all the way down to the bottom, and three from the bottom is a drone handbook. It's 88 pages long. I know that's long, but study every, everything that's on the test is in those 88 pages, and it's real important to know these VFR sectional charts and the uh, frequencies of the airports, the heights of radio towers, when you can fly and when you can't fly in military zone operations, uh, the METARs and TAFs, which are the weather reports. And the very beginning, they're gonna see overwhelming, but they're really easy to learn. What to, what to expect when you get there, between the 60 questions, uh, you get a booklet and it's going to have 85 diagrams in it and you're going to be able to uh, flip back and, and you're going to be able to flip back and forth with the booklet that corresponds with the questions uh each question has three possible answers one of them is usually pretty silly so you got a 50 50 shot of getting them right and 10 of those questions out of the 60 are going to be pretty silly or just common sense questions like is it okay to fly if you're hung over even though the regulation says you can fly after not having alcohol in your system for eight hours well common sense tells you if you're hung over you can't you can't operate uh, a safe aircraft in the air if you're hungover. So uh, some of those, if you just read the question and, and study it and ask what they're saying, because they try to trick you sometimes. And people, they blame the FAA and they make fun of them on some of those other websites, but the FAA really just wants you to use your brain and they want smart, intelligent people passing this test. Will you ever use this? I don't think so. Um, you're not gonna look at a, a VR sectional chart or look at weather reports for METARs and TAFs when you can use things like Kitty Hawk. There's apps that you go to. It shows you the weather report, if it's going, the wind conditions, um, different aspects that could be coming up in the weather, and, and more importantly is your airspace. Uh, the airspace you're in, could it be limited? Are you close to an airport? Um, is there different regulations, what's called a, a, a notice to airmen, uh, a NOTAM, things like that that, that could be changing. Uh, with the airspace, with uh, different you know, air shows, the 
president could be flying over Utah. You don't know. It's going to let you know those things on those apps if it's safe to fly. You might be asking yourself, uh, if you're like me, I'm a roofing contractor. Do I need a Part 107 license? Absolutely. If you're a hobbyist, you don't need a, a drone license. If you're chasing your dogs around the yard and things like that. But um, even policemen, uh, firemen, people that aren't for hire with drones, but they're using them in a commercial aspect and they, you need to have your Part 107 license. Um, especially if you're getting paid for video photography for real estate or anything, agriculture or inspections or whatever you're doing, of course you need it then. But there's a lot of areas that you think that you're using it for your own personal use. But uh, if your personal use is for personal gain, then you need it. You might be thinking, James, do I really need to pay $150 to join an online study course and $150 to take the test? No, I mean, you can get by. There's a lot of really good YouTube videos that are hour, hour and a half long that you can study and uh, along with the 88 page handbook and maybe pass it. I think it's a great tool to use because then you could probably use it over and over every two years. Uh, there's uh, inspired pilots. There's all kinds of really good programs out there. You need to look and see which one uh, that you like the most. Also the FAA, when it's time to take the test, if you go to the FAA website and you type in uh, part 107 test, it will show you the closest facility uh, to your hometown to take the test. And then once you get on there, you can schedule your test and it'll tell you the different test sites. And then when you go to the test site website, that's where you pay and schedule uh, the time for you to go. And I say get there early, calm down. Uh, so I'm building a YouTube studio and I'm starting a drone video and media production company. I've already got some golf courses lined up, a lot of realtors and some sailboat regattas. Uh, would love to have you follow me along on this journey over the next year, especially as I dive into this, this FPV. So thanks for watching. Uh, please, if you got any good information out of this, uh, please click uh, like and subscribe because I've got a lot of really good videos planned up. My next one's gonna be on beginner drones and why they're so important. You gotta learn the orientation of drones before you start flying. There's a video out on YouTube right now that lists the top 10 drones you should have in 2021. You know what their number one drone is? The Inspire 2. Really? 10 grand? You're going to go buy, spend 10, even $14,000 on an Inspire 2 as your first drone? No, I think the first drone you should buy is the HS210, which is $21 because it teaches you the orientation. But we'll get into all that then. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.